Hello, thank you for watching this video. So in this video, we're doing question six of November 22, question paper mathematics paper one, 2022. So this is uh, trigonometric functions or graphs. So I'm going to read the statement. So but I've drawn the graph here, you know. So I'm going to read the statement and then answer the questions that follow. So let's go. In the diagram below, which is this, the graph of f and g are drawn on the interval from x is equal to 80 minus 80 to x is equal to minus from x is equal to minus 80 180 to x is equal to 180 so let me read this again in the diagram below two graph f and g are drawn for the interval where x starts at minus 180 to positive 180. So you are given these functions f and g where we are plotted from minus 180 should be minus 180 there from minus 180 to positive 180 right so both of these graphs f and g are plotted on this interval x is from minus 180 to positive 180. A and B are the points of intersections of F and G. So this point and that point are the points of intersection of these two functions that are plotted here. So, uh, we can see this. So let's answer the question that follows. 6.1. Write down the period of G. They're saying write down the period of G. Which function is G? So G is this one. Uh, this sine function which is this function here. So what is the period of a function? So a period of a function is the time it takes for a function to, uh, it's the time for one complete oscillation. How long does it take to complete the oscillation? So our function, we can say it starts here, goes up, it goes down, it goes back up to the original position where it started. And then at this point, it repeats again. So it takes, uh, from minus 180 to 0 to complete, or from 0 to 180 to complete. So the unit comp the unit or the pulse of the pulse is just this part here. So one complete wave is just found after 180 units. So the period, so the period of a function, especially of an oscillating one or periodic function, it is the time it takes. How long does it take for one complete wave to be drawn or to be completed? So from here, go down up to this position. So if you go down again, which means you are starting that, you are repeating that. So the period will be from is, is this period here, because it takes 180 uh, units to be completed. Or you can look at it from this point, it takes 180 units to get here. Or you can look at it from um, this point up until here because from here it will go down and go up again it's up to you so the period has gone to 180 degrees or if you don't know how to look at it on the graph you can say um, we know that the period of sine x is equal to 360 degrees over 1, where you want this coefficient here. And then now if you want period of sine to x, it's going to be 360 degrees over the 2 that is there, which is 180, if you can look at it in the graph. So that's how you do it. So this one you should know. So we go to 6.2. I'm going to clean most of these things. So your period is 180. Just look at it on the graph. Or if you don't know, you can calculate. 6.2.1. Calculate the value of k. What is k? k is the y value here. Of which function? It's up to you which one you want to use. So I'll say let's use the value of what? Of tan. Let's use tan. So you have the corresponding x value. You want the y value. So, you know that f 
at x is equal to tan x, right? So what do you say? You say, okay, now you have f is 60 because you were given the x value that is 60. You want to call it find the corresponding y value. So it's going to be tan of 60 degrees, right? So f at 60 is equal to a special angle. We know this. So it's going to be square root of 3 over 1, which is square root of 3. That's how we do it. So it's going to be this one. So go to 6.2.2. What are they saying? Calculate the coordinates. Uh, calculate the coordinates of B. Where is B? B is here. So there is B. It's where these graphs intersect again. How many minutes? It's one mark. So if you're looking at this point here. It's exactly identical to that point. This is exactly the same point. But this point is one period away. So, you said your period is 180. So, if you move from this point to this point, this point is exactly one period away. So, it's 180 degrees away from where, from this point here. So, if you want to know what that is, which means you have, must move one period to that direction. So, which means, if you want to find the coordinates of B, uh, the Y coordinate will remain the same, right? The Y coordinate should remain the same because they are on, they are, they are on the same horizontal line. So, you say, okay, my, um, the coordinates of B. So, you can say, okay, uh, the coordinates of B, my X is what I want to find, my Y should remain the same, right? So, this is one period away, because this is exactly the same point as that, but except that it's one period away, because you can see, it is exactly this. Because we said the period is the time it takes for one complete oscillation. So, you can move from here to this, and restart again. So, it should be, x should be one, equal to 160 degrees minus 80 units to that direction. So this should be equal to um, minus 120 degrees. So see that is uh, minus 120, um, uh, minus 120 and root 3. So see those are the coordinates of B. Because it's exactly one period away. Because this is exactly the identical point. It's very identical to that one. So 6.3. For which values of x is f of is g at x plus 5 minus f of x, f at x plus 5 less or equal to 0? They're asking for which values of x or, so for which values of x is g of x plus 5 minus f of x plus 5 less or equal to 0? So, it's more like they're saying solve for x such that this equation is satisfied. Right, so that means your g of x plus 5 should be less or equal to f of x plus 5. This is what they are telling you. So they want you to find the values of x where this function f is above g, where the blue function is above, um, oh, where the shifted. They want you to find the values of x where the shifted, uh, where this equation is satisfied, right? So I'll say the first thing to do, because they are asking you on the shifted versions of these ones, because these functions, these two, are shifted uh, five units left to the left. They are shifted five units to the left. So what I'll say to find this solution for the original one, right? And then afterwards, you shift them because shifting them will not change anything. So, find, solve for this on the original equation, on the original formulas, on the original function. 
and then just shift it to the left, shift whatever that you get to the left. For example, let's solve for uh, g and x greater or less or equal to capital and x, right? So this is true where where is where is g or on, on which interval actually on the interval uh, x is an element of what of minus ninety to zero on this interval here yeah, minus ninety to zero this is the interval that we want we only want this interval so where is f which is the blue function above the, the gray one from this point to this point here. So, uh, where are these guys meeting? So, if they are meeting here, this is an identical version of that, but just up below. So, what we have here at this point here, I will say we have uh, minus 60 and minus 3. So those are the coordinates of that point. And then you have your zero there. So, they wanted to give on this interval where this one is above, where the blue one is above the gray one, which is F is above, is greater or equal to G. So that interval would be uh, X is an element of that point, minus 60 to Y, to zero. That's where that is. So this is for the original functions. Then now, if you want it for those, you just shift what you have to the left. That's all you do. So you just say, okay, I have g and x plus 5, less or equal to f and x plus 5. So you shifted this function 5 units to the left. So these guys will also shift 5 units to the left, which means now you will have your solutions for this as x is an element of what? Of minus 65 to minus 5. Or your x is less or equal to, greater or equal to, minus 65 and less or equal to minus 5. I think it should be something similar to this. Because you are just shifting these guys to that side. That's all you're doing. So if you can find this, then you can find this. But you just have to shift these guys to the left five units. So which is what we just did, just shifted all these five units to the left. I think that's how we do this one. 6.5. Determine the values of P for which sine x cos x is equal to P. Determine the values of P, right? For which this equation here uh, will have only two real roots. We want it to have only two real roots on this interval, minus 180 and to 180, right? So what is this? So that is 2 sine x cos x called P all over 2. Because this and this are cancel and then you have that. And then you know what this is. This is sine 2x over 2. It's called P. So what do you say? Um, you say, okay, I have what? I have sine 2x is equal to 2p, right? So, you want it on this interval, right? So what you do, uh, actually, you could have just half, so, oh, it's not even half of that. Oh, okay, so now you have the half of this, you have this here is the half of this guy. So this guy here is, is the half of your G, which means it has the same shape as G, except that your G is turning at what? Is turning at two. And what? And and 
minus 2. So it's changing at this point, this function of x. Alright? So now, if you are working with this half, which means now it will turn at 1 now. We have exactly the same shape, except that it turning, it's turning at, at 1. This thing will have 1 somewhere here. 1. So your function is turning here and turning there. It's turning at minus 1. Right? So we have this. So what do you do? See, okay. Turning here. And this one is turning it here. This one is turning there. This one is going to turn something here. So now, the function that we have, the black one, this black one, is like it is exactly this, right? So you want it where between uh, from minus one eighty to one eighty, where it will have exactly two roots. So it will only have two roots here if p is equal to uh, wait if two p, which means if your two p is equal to this part. Which is, is equal to the maximum value here. Because you only get two rows when you have this line here, the horizontal line. So you only get you will get this when your 2p is equal to uh, positive one. Which means this is this area, which is now you only be cutting this part. This will it, and if your y is equal to p, uh, which is equal to one. Oh, if your y is equal to one, you which if this, wait, if this is equal to one, right, then you are going to have one root. Or if this is equal to minus one, so it's either your two p is equal to plus or minus one. So you divide by two, divide by two. So your p is equal to plus or minus one over two, because you only have one root if your p is this so is touching only the 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 turning point of your function. And then I done with this. I think. I'm not sure if I 